Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we discuss about the extrinsic semiconductor materials. Extrinsic. And we've seen the basic uh, introductory video of this extrinsic. But today, you know, we see the special P type semiconductor materials. All right. In extrinsic, we see the P type materials. Okay, now we've seen that uh, extrinsic is what? An impurity is added to the to the uh, pure that is the intrinsic material. All right, and this impurity is added in one proportion. So we've also seen that one part is added in a million parts or in ten million parts. One part is added in ten million parts, right? And even this, uh, this proportion of this impurity can alter the properties of this semiconductor. Now silicon is one of the most widely used uh, semiconductor materials. So we over here will be considering a silicon base or a silicon substrate. So what is that? Basically that we, the substrate or the base means that for our operation, that is the impurity we are adding, that we will be adding into the silicon atoms. So this implies that for the impurity, the base is silicon. All right. Now for p-type materials, what type of impurity atoms are added? So the atoms of group five are added as impurities. For uh, in p-type materials, atoms of group five of periodic table are added as impurities right and atoms of group 5 indicate what atoms with 5 valence electrons atoms with 5 valence electrons now so let me uh, take a silicon base you know this is a silicon right here we have negative 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 this is the band structure for it so silicon this is silicon it has four electrons in the valence shell right now if you add uh, an, uh, an impurity from group 5 that is let's say antimony is added over here antimony for example antimony the symbol for antimony is SB. Okay, so this SB is over here, right, with the red color. So this has one electron. It has the second electron, the third electron, the fourth electron. And the fifth electron as well. So I'm talking, coming to that fifth electron, right? So this, 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 uh, this, uh, Impurity atom now will be surrounded by these four silicon atoms, right? So a silicon has four electrons, so it will make bond with the four electrons of this antimony like this. Okay? And what happens? What happens is that we have another electron still remaining. This electron, fifth electron. We still have another electron left in this antimony atom. This we cannot term as a free electron over here because the number of protons uh, or neutrons in the nucleus of the atom is still there and uh, is, are still equal to the number of electrons in this atom. But, but this electron is what? This is not bonded to any other electron. It's not free right now, but, but it is also not bonded. And what do you have? This electron is not bonded and also this is now loosely bonded to this parent atom. How? Because the others have made a covalent bond. So the covalent bond is a stronger bond and this is not bonded and this is loosely bound to 
to, to, to move in the crystal structure, to move in the crystal structure of, of what? To move the, in the crystal structure, right? This crystal structure, this will repeat. So this can move from one antimony item to another antimony. The other antimony item will, will electron will come over here, right? So from this we can write a conclusion that diffused impurities with five electrons are called donor atoms. Diffused impurities or with the green color. Diffused impurities with five valence electrons are donor atoms. Why? Because it has donated an electron, right? Donated an electron to the structure. And these impurities with five valence electrons, they are called pentavalent atoms. I've already told you before, these are the pentavalent atoms. Pentavalent impurities are added. So let me read it out from the book and I have made a very major mistake, a very major mistake that is this, these are the n type materials that I am discussing over here and I have written the heading of p type. These are n type materials, right? So now let me read it out from the book. Both n type and p type materials are formed by adding a predictable number of impurity atoms to the silicon base. An n-type material is created by introducing impurity elements that have five valence electrons and in this case the impurity atom that we took was antimony having five valence electrons. <coughs> now what do you have? Uh, the effect of such impurity atom uh, is indicated using antimony as impurity in a silicon base is given in an example, right? Now what do you have? Note that the four covalent bonds are still present. Four covalent bonds are present, right? There is where there is however an additional fifth electron due to the impurity atom right uh, which is unassociated with any particular covalent bond this remaining electron loosely bound to its parent atom is relatively free to move within the newly formed beta n type material this is relatively free to move uh, in the uh, lattice right so what do you have since the inserted impurity atom has donated are relatively free well this is not the absolute free that it's absolutely conducting but we can just relatively say it to be a free electron. So therefore these diffused impurities with five electrons are called donor atoms, right? It is important to realize that even though a large number of free carriers have established in the n-type material, a large number of these uh, electrons have established in the n-type material, it is still electrically neutral. Why? Because the... Uh, the number of positively charged protons in the nucleus of this antimony are still equal to the number of free electrons that are free in the structure. All right. Now there is a point that uh, a discrete energy level appears in the forbidden gap with significantly less than interesting material. Those free electrons due to added impurities sit at the energy level and have less difficult absorbing. This result in room temperature. Okay. So now what do you have? We, we sat in the previous video like this. Uh, it was like this, right? Uh, this was the valence band. And the conduction band was over here. And there was an energy gap represented by this green color. Okay. And now these uh, free electrons, these free electrons, uh, what do we have? Donor level. These free electrons over here, they are sitting at this energy level. These free electrons that are created due to adding the impurity atom, these are sitting over here, that is the donor level. Donor level or what? Let me, let me confirm it from the book. Yes, it's the, this, it's the discrete energy level called the donor level. The green color is the energy gap. So which means now these electrons create, these, create, these electrons require a less number of energy than the valence electrons to become free. So a relatively very low energy is required to make them free. And we have a number given over here. 
that uh, those free electrons due to added impurity sit at the, uh, this energy level and have less difficulty absorbing a sufficient measure of thermal energy to move into the conduction band even at room temperature. The result is that at room temperature there are a large number of carriers electrons in the conduction level and the conductivity of the material increases significantly. So the conductivity of this material has increased right by adding impurities the conductivity has increased okay conductivity has increased. And this is, we are discussing at room temperature, right? Not at higher temperature although. So, now the next point is that at room temperature in an intrinsic silicon material, there is about one free electron. Intrinsic, in an intrinsic silicon, so here a figure is given, in intrinsic silicon, we have one free electron in about 10 to the power 12 atoms right and over here what do we have uh, in if the dosage level is 1 in 10 million like this so the ratio is equal to if the dosage level is this one part in 10 million so in extrinsic if you add this much of an impurity so what do you have the ratio now this would be like this silicon material one Dosage level is 1 in 10 million, let me write it down, 1 in 10 million, which means 1 in 10 to the power 7. So if you take the ratio of 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 7, so this increased by this much ratio, 10 to the power 2 by 10 to the power 7. So this would now 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ratio 1. So I will explain this ratio now. Okay. Now what do you have? <clears throat> if this was the uh, if you have a pure uh, silicon material so it has only one free electron right this is that one free electron for intrinsic and now if you have an extrinsic material like this if only one impurity atom is added in a 10 million pure atoms so you have this much of free electrons which is 10 to the power 5 so you know you have only one in the pure form in an extrinsic form you have 10 to the power 5 free electrons which means now the conductivity level has increased and it has increased significantly isn't it so so we told you that this addition of impurity is called doping this addition of impurity was called doping we said it in the introductory video so by the doping we have changed the electrical properties of the semiconductor you know it was not conducting only one electron and now the number of electrons have increased so the conduction will definitely increase that's all about the n type material see you in the next lecture very soon with the p type material till then take care goodbye